now we are on again. And the winner of the break prize was the Italian guy, so he now got free water for the rest of the semester <laughs> from the tap. Okay, I'll come back. Yeah. Now we are soon moving over to Ricardo, but we have to say a few things before. It's one factor. How many factors do you know if I ask you from microeconomics? Capital, the two? Uh, one, two, yeah. Mm. Three. Human uh, technology, which can be capital, land, area. Yeah. So this is a production with one factor, labor. It is probably to misconcept it, but we have to make sure that you understand the model. So it's producing t two goods, wine and cheese. That is because there are so many incoming students. If not, we have used the Norwegian, which is, would have been potatoes and fish. Okay, but here it's wine and cheese. The original example is Portugal and England. So if there are anything that you doubt if you understood, Lena will know the answer, but you might ask before you leave the class. So if something is unclear, or let's put it this way, if something is not too clear, ask questions. Because before you know, you will know this, it will be so clear as a Norwegian West Coast summer day, no, I mean winter day with sun, everything is clear. You have no problem with seeing it, it's so clear. Uh, like the Germans knew before they came over, because this is on the West Coast, we have the Gulf Stream, so relax. It's not as cold as you think. It's not minus 40. But did you see the polar bear in the street last night? No, that is also because this is Western Norway. Oh. Open. Hello. Is it there? Yes. Here we go. Okay. There is one factor. You can use it to produce cheese or wine. You measure it in gallons, that is wine, because it's floating or liquid, or in pounds, because it's firm like cheese. So this is the economy. One factor, two goods. So we call it the simple, easy start. So far, you can follow us. Yeah, then we can take the next picture. If you can shift from the production of one to the other, that is what we call the absolute value of the slope of equal opportunity cost of cheese in terms of wine. OK, so here you see. To produce one unit of wine, you have to use or reduce the production with two units of cheese. So you are twice as productive in producing cheese compared to wine. You, you need one hour to produce cheese, then you need two hours to produce wine. And since you are coming from Brazil, you will know why, because you have to pick them and then you have to squeeze them. So that takes two hours. While cheese, you only boil it down and have it in one hour. So that is the first country, home, called later, where you can produce cheese twice as effective or measured in productivity, double the productivity of producing. So put it in words, it means that to produce a pound of cheese, you need one hour. To produce two pounds of cheese, you need if you shift to wine, you need both hours to produce one unit of cheese. 
no, oh, 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 why? So it's twice as productive using the labor for cheese compared to wine production. So far, so good. So every time you decide to produce a gallon of wine, you have to give up two pounds of cheese. And then if you look at me and say, I don't like cheese, OK? Move to the country where they produce wine. And that is what is taking place. So we measure the use of resources. And since it's double number of units to produce the alternative, the opportunity cost is you lose two kilos of cheese if you want to have one gallon of wine. And since this is Portugal, it's hot wine from Porto. And we call it sport wine, isn't it? OK, let's go back. So now we need, oh no, now we know what we need to produce, either wine or cheese or a combination. There is a budget constraint. Well, didn't we agree to that, Florian? Sorry. There is a budget constraint. So there is a maximum production of cheese where you produce no wine, OK? Then there is a similar limit to produce wine and no cheese. And before we reveal the truth, how much cheese can you compare to, mount, counted in pounds, compared to how many gallons? You can produce a wine if the let's say, productivity is one to two, or two to one. That was very difficult to answer, Christian. But if I say the answer is twice as much units of cheese compared to wine, because the unit of cheese requires one hour. So then you can, let's say, produce 100. How many gallons can you produce if it takes two hours? 50. OK? So don't be shocked when we now reveal the truth. OK? I once had, no, I could show with a red B. But as I said, <coughs> this is 100 pounds of cheese using one hour per, then I got 50 gallons of wine when I used two hours to produce one gallon. So every time I want to shift to wine production, I have to reduce the cheese production with two. Lean back. Think it over. So far, it's clear. So the budget constraints say, this is the maximum of production of cheese. I have 100 hours. I spend one hour per. So the maximum production of cheese is 100. OK? So that is the budget constraint. We cannot produce more than 100 pounds of cheese. Even though I know an Italian cheese eating lawyer that is willing to pay 3,000 kroner per pound of cheese cannot produce it. The constant says, this is all. We cannot produce more. Remember that. OK? <coughs> if we decide to produce wine, I can produce that, but then I need twice as much labor per unit. Wine. So therefore, only half of it. So far, so good. What decides if I mix or specialize? We'll come back to it later. But one solution could be to mix. Is that possible with trade? And then I look at the Dutch and say, don't worry. The answer is yes. There can also be a mix, depending on relative prices. But in the beginning, we think of specialization. OK, so here it is. Use a certain number of labor 
hours to produce one or the other, and the limit is L for labor, the total number of labor for working hours. Think of it as a limit. L also could be ask Lena limit. So that is the budget constant. More than that is impossible to produce. Although there are customers, let's say coming in from China, and they are on their way to buy a British football club, and they want to buy cheese from you, say, sorry, this is all we can produce. Take it or leave it. So far, so good. So there is a mix production, or it is a specialized production. It's decided by the limit, which is the budget constant. The mix is such that two units of labor can produce two units of cheese, but only one gallon of wine. Does it look OK so far? So the world is not too bad for a student in a classroom on the west coast of Norway because it's sunny outside. So when we finish, you can at least go out and enjoy the sun. OK. Then we have come up with the first conclusions. One, what decided what is produced will be decided by the price of wine compared to the price of cheese, the relative prices. <coughs> labor decide to maximize the revenue or income from labor. OK? If the price of wine is 7, and you spend two hours to produce a gallon of wine. What is the hour paid wage for that? Three and a half. As I always thought, Frenchmen are engineers. They know mathematics. <laughs> yes. If the, the number of hours you spend to produce a cheese, uh, a, a, a unit of cheese, and you earn four dollars to sell it. What is the wage hour price for cheese? One hour, sell it at a price of four. How much do you get? Then the engineer still calculating, or is the computer halted? How much do you earn per hour if you can produce one unit of cheese and sell it at four dollars? Pretty close to four, isn't it? Very close. Yeah. What kind of work would a labor choose if you get four for one hour cheese production work or three and a half for one hour of wine production and want to maximize his earnings. Now the calculator is working. And the answer is cheese. So if this was decided by the wage, the labor would choose to produce cheese. So far, so good. No one is crying. And no one is sending message home to mama. So then we can go on. So here we are. If the labor should choose, and this is the prices, they would specialize in cheese, simply because it maximized the income. To change to a different production, the opportunity cost is lower, so you earn less money. No one would do that. OK, no profit simply means that the labor gets the money. No capitalist, no need for a socialist revolution. <laughs> There is no profit. OK? What decide if you do the one or the other is simply the relative prices <coughs> between the two goods, PC uh, divided by PW, compared to the hours you spend on production. So far, so good. And since the wage for cheese is highest, then the decision rule is simply, if there is a shift in relative prices, would you, would you then shift production? 
If cheese and wine with train will be sold at different prices, what happens to production? So lean back, think it over. With trade, we know that relative prices will change. This can influence production. So it might be that one of, let's say, uh, the countries decide to specialize, but need not do so, but probably will do so. We'll see very soon what happens. So here we are. The economy will specialize in production of cheese if relative price of cheese exceeds the co <coughs> opportunity cost in terms of wine. So if you get more out of your labor by producing cheese, you will produce cheese. But if the relative prices changes, so you get more out of the hour you work by producing wine, then you will specialize in wine. In Ricardo's example, it is one country specializes in cheese and the other one in wine, because the relative prices changes, uh, let's say, uh, the production pattern that way. Now it seems like all of you are thinking. Some of you are sleepy. A few of you put down notes. But so far, so good. Yeah. OK. In absence of international trade, the relative prices of goods are equal to the relative units of labor requirement, as we saw before at the first example. So what will change this is relative prices with trade. So now we are looking for what happens if there is trade. And this part is. Uh, sponsored by WTO, which is the World Trade Organization. So their interest is prove that trade is profitable. OK? To trade, we need two countries. So far, you can follow me, Lauren. If you want to trade, you need more than one country. OK, so we need two countries. The other countries, we, if the first is home, the other country is foreign. Put in a very simple way, it's all the others. It's like playing football with Germany. They are always the best. And if, if you can gather, a, let's say, a team of very good football players, you can beat them. So this is what it is. Home is the country where you produce, and foreign is the country where you can buy or sell uh, your production. And we call it trade. So far, so good? Yes? Uh, there are two countries. Do you see the, the it's, it looks like a star, doesn't it? But this is something we got from France. It's an asterisk. It's not his friend. What was his name, the big guy? Obelix, Obelix. Obelix yeah. So this is an asterisk. The other one is Obelix, OK? so. Asterisk means it's the foreign, and without, it's the home country's uh, labor need for production. OK? Home relative productivity is higher in cheese than in wine, this says. So they need less to produce cheese than wine. So they would prefer to produce cheese. Let's call it Italy since the wine is from Bordeaux, isn't it? Yeah. So the alternative is the foreign, where the, uh, the relative productivity is, e.g., is Western Norwegian dialect for is. So if you wonder why it's sell e, it's, you will soon learn about Norwegian dialects, won't you? Yeah, so that is. OK? So the other country is producing wine. You see it here, because they can produce an extra unit of uh, wine uh, spend using less labor to achieve the same production. So here we are. The absolute value of the slope of equal opportunity cost is different in foreign compared to home. 
else you won't get any trade. So the secret, if we keep it between us, is the slope of the curve is different in the two countries. They will intersect somewhere. So far, OK. <coughs> Home has an absolute advantage in producing cheese. But that is not important when it comes to trade. So it uses less labor to produce cheese. So that is the absolute advantage. But for trade, this is not important. It's the comparative advantage that decides. Still so far so good? OK. Then we look into what happens if the trades are established. And then uh, Krugman explains it very simply. If the price is low, let's say half in this example, there uh, you have the labor uh, or the relative productivity of home, then the home would supply cheese. <coughs> so far, at a certain point, the price will go up. Then also foreign, if the price is high enough, will also supply cheese. So you can end up with a very high price that both countries produce cheese and can produce it at any amount because they can produce whatever needed. So flat simply means this is produced at a home country because the price is too low, so the foreign won't produce it. But if the price of cheese increases to uh, what is called two in our example, then also foreign would produce cheese. So you can end up in a situation that both could export cheese. But then the price has to be very high. OK? One is the standard. So the world demand, or the two countries' demand for cheese is given by RD, which is called a relative demand. Have you seen a, a market approach that demand and supply is a linear function? Have you heard about microeconomics? Have you seen a microeconomic graph sometimes? Back home in France? OK, yeah. So this is a little bit strange compared to what you are used to, isn't it? The demand function looks normal. The supply function is explained by the simple model. It's either home, a mix, or foreign producing the supply. Home supply is given by the budget constraint. So up to a certain point, this will be if home specialized. Produce a certain amount of cheese. If the demand is very high, also foreign would produce cheese. So that's it. Foreign will probably produce a, com <coughs> a mix or combination. So one is where both specialize. The price for the home uh, production of cheese doubles from half to one. OK. The price of wine goes down from two to one. OK. So cheese and wine would generate the same in income for the trading country. So far, so good. Now it's going to be more and more complicated. So it's just time to, let's say, fall back and say, now I've lost touch. OK. So here it says, in the home market, the price would be half. With trade, the price goes up to one. Guess what happens to income in a country where you produce cheese if price double? Income double. So it will be lucrative to export cheese. OK? In the other country, the price, the national price will go down. You can get it cheaper by importing it. Guess what happens to the exporting country? 
when they can go out in the market when they get it for half the price or import wine. So what they do is simply export cheese and they get wine for half the price. That sounds like sale, doesn't it? What would happen if you went out to Molde? You needed a pair of, let's say, hot, uh, knitted, uh, woven things to put on your hands. And you went there yesterday, and the price was 200. And you come back, and uh, now you get it for half the price. You buy one, at least, don't you? Yeah. OK. So the price changes. The value of the cheese you produce in the home market is more valuable to export or trade. In addition, you can buy from the exporting country of wine, wine to half a price compared to produce it at home. What would you do, Christine? Import or produce? Import? Because you get it for half the price, yeah? So instead of producing yourself and pay two, you get it for one. It means that you can get two gallons of wine for the price of producing at home for one. Doesn't that sound like a, a, an interesting and probably profitable activity to take part? Yeah. So the prices changes. You get more for what you produce, and you can buy what you need for half a price if you import them. See what happens. What about two? If this is the relative demand, what happens to the cheese production? Only at home, because the price is half. So at home, now you get a mix. You produce some cheese, not all of it, so you can also produce wine. So if price is very low, home country would not specialize, but combine with cheese, because you are not earning too much, and the rest could be wine production. So they produce more wine at home instead of importing them. The sad story is they get less out of their export. They earn less money. They cannot afford to import so much because they earn less money. The answer is simply being a French student, going to Norway, you got less money than you thought of. So all your ideas to go to see polar bears in the street, you have to drop half of it because it's too expensive. And that is what this is about. You get less out of your import, uh, export. You have less to buy imports. And therefore, you mix. You produce part of it yourself. <coughs> So far, so good. So there are different uh, possibilities for trade. But the standard would be something between half and two, which means both specialize, as we will see. So far, there is more fresh tap water out of. So here we are. So it's relative demand that decides the price. If relative demand is high, you get more values out of your <coughs> export. Okay. If price is very low, relative price is re very low, there is no cheese supply, only wine supply. Both specialize in wine production. <coughs> um, <coughs> if it's equal, the home produce both cheese and wine, as we saw at point two. So at point two, they produce both at home. OK? Uh, if r relative prices is uh, higher than the producti relative produ productivity in the home country, you see, the question is, do you see that? ALV over A, no, ALC over ALV is the home 
country's relative production, productivity. If that is lower than relative price and lower than uh, the relative productivity in the foreign country, home specialized in cheese. So if the, it's lowest in the home country and lower than, uh, or and re um, compared to the relative prices, it will specialize in cheese. The other one is that if it's in between, both specialize. And as we saw in the figure, it's in between, so both specialize. So then we can come up with two possible outcomes. Both specialize with one in uh, figure 3.5, no, 3.2, I think it is. And foreign specialize in wine because it's a relative advantage uh, or comparative advantage in wine production, while home specialize in its <coughs> comparative advantage with its not wine, but cheese. So in between, both specialize. The country with comparative advantage export their product, home, cheese, foreign wine. This simply means that you reduce the wine production in home and increase wine production in foreign, if it was a mix before. OK? They specialize because of comparative advantage. That was what Ricardo came up with. It's comparative advantage that, comp uh, that uh, explain trade. So far, yeah. So since country, home country has a uh, relative uh, comparative advantage in cheese, they produce cheese and only cheese. And foreign has a comparative advantage in production of wine might be more expensive, but compared to the alternative, it is wine. So they specialize in wine. If relative prices converge, they specialize with the lowest labor unit requirement. Since price rises for cheese at home and makes it more uh, profitable to export, and they can pay more for the wine, or they get more money to buy the wine that they import, but at a lower price than producing at home. So I the idea is simply this. Trade reduces the prices of wine. It makes it more uh, expensive to produce at home compared to trade. So since price of wine is higher in the home country, compared to the uh, world market, let's call it world market, then produce it not at home, but by importing it from the country that can produce it for a lower price, one. So produce cheese because you get more money out of it. Use some of the cheese for export. That generates income. So now you have income to pay for import. Why do you import wine? It's simply because it's cheaper than producing at home. So one, export, <coughs> because you get more money out of it, you can afford to import. Two, import that you can get cheaper by importing instead of producing it at home. Almost OK? Yeah. Then. Lena will point you at any time the following graph. Uh, C stands for cheese. W stands for wine. Yes? If this is home, it looks like this. I think it, it calls it F. If you use all the labor you have access to to produce only cheese, that is to specialize, OK? What happens if you trade? You'll be explaining a little bit later. 
let's call this P. This is what you can produce at home. This is the figure you saw before, isn't it? You've seen it before. Yes. Okay? What happens if you trade is simply this. I sell one unit of cheese. If I produce it at home, I got a half. When I sell it, I got twice of the half. What is the, twi uh, the double of a half? I hear it one. OK, so gradually, if you trade, you will get more and more out of it. So you reduce the, produc uh, the production of buying at home. You specialize in cheese. And you sell more and more cheese on the world market. And for every unit of cheese you sell, you earn half of the value by exporting it. Instead of producing it at home, you buy it in an export market and get it for half the price. So with trade, you increase the production with he, what he call indirect. Production simply means you could have produced it at home. I don't plan to produce any wine at home. I will only produce cheese. But by selling the cheese to the Italian who is foreign to us, he will pay double the price. And for every time I sell him a cheese, I can buy a unit of wine. So I increase my access to wine simply by let the Italian pay for the wine production. And I sell them cheese. And this will pay for the imports of wine. So if I produce it, I end up here. If I trade them, I end up twice as much. So by specializing in cheese, and sell part of the cheese to the foreign country, I can double what I can offer my consumers of wine. And that sounds like a nice party, because you got double amount of wine. So in case the cheese is not good, enjoy the wine. So what we actually do is produce cheese, 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 cheese every day. And then you will look at me and say, but I want wine. Oh, yeah, no problem. Foreign will produce it for us. They do it for half the cost of our production. So why should I produce wine when I can get it for half the price? And you need not be Dutch to understand that. I import it. I have no idea of producing it at home. I can get it from the world market for half the price. Why on earth should I spend resources I'm producing something that I get for half the price. So that's it. So I specialize in cheese. I do not sell cheese at home, all of it. No, the foreign will have part of my cheese. <coughs> Why will he have part of my cheese? I need wine. He's the one that produces wine. So I can stick to my wine, no, to my cheese, no wine. You invite in friends, we don't have cheese, what about wine? No, we don't have wine, we don't produce wine, only cheese. This is what they do. With this, they can double the consumption of wine by importing it. Can they afford it? Yes, they can sell cheese. So the friends of Christine will come in and visit her simply because she served both wine and cheese. No one will visit Laurent because he's only wine producing. So in the end, somebody will say, oh, is there not a food here? And then he will say, go to Christine, because she's understood this. You double the access to wine by exporting part of your cheese, not using it yourself. Export it and pay for the import. OK? So far, so good. You seem a little bit dubious, Romain. But that is because your friend Obelix is not fond of wine. OK? But so far, so good. What happens to the other country? 
let's get, make a smaller part. This is F. They produce wine. They can produce wine or cheese. If they produce cheese themselves, uh, they get only half. So they produce more and more wine. Every day you invite some workers in and they say, should we produce cheese today? No, wine. And the next day, no, wine. Only wine. Because when they do that, they get all these wines. In addition, they get double the amount of cheese they can consume. For every unit they sell of wine, they can import cheese. For every unit they drop the production of cheese, they can produce more wine. And they earn by it simply because it's more lucrative to produce it and sell it than it is to produce it at home because cheese is a hell of an expensive product in foreign to produce. Was it possible to understand? Yes. OK. And Lena will be taking the bus every day from now on, quarter past five. No, uh, just a few minutes to five. And you will can, can discuss it with Lena whenever she's on the bus. Then we are getting very close to the conclusion. Here it is. Countries specialize in the production of the goods, they have comparative advantage. They use part of that production to export. <coughs> then they get money. Guess what they use the money for? Import, import of the other goods. And the more they export, the more they import. Does that sound like a happy Christmas? So what Ricardo simply proved was this. Specialize if you have comparative advantage. Use all your resources to produce that. Because you need not produce the other. That is done by the foreign. They can do it for half the price. And if you are a Norwegian, you come from Sundmøre, then you understand that this is a very lucrative business. Don't imagine that you one second will produce any wine in the home specialized cheese production country. And we call it the Netherlands, because they are known for their goudas. So in Norway, they are known only for cheese. And where do they export it? For Norway, it's to Bordeaux, where they produce wine. And some would say the best wine, but uh, Laurent is not uh, agreeing for that, but that we can take later. So, it's a very simple model that explains. Specialize where you have comparative advantage. Use the production to export. Pay for the import. And that increase your production possibilities. Not within the country, but with trade. If you wake up with a nightmare, just call Lena. If you wake up with two nightmares, watch. Fronter, because this is live recorded on Fronter. If you don't understand what it said on Fronter, read the slides. If you still have nightmares, it's natural. All of us have nightmares, so don't be, be happy with all that. So far, so good? OK. You have one homework, all of you. You meet. You discuss and come up with a solution to this paper, which is the drafted plan for lectures. I have already planned the four lectures, so you won't worry about that. But the rest, you will have a saying. But since I am the brother of Yanukovych in Ukraine, I don't give you, let's say, uh, any uh, guarantees that you will have your wishes fulfilled, but hopefully you can get one. See you next week in this room. Have a nice day and enjoy the nightmares.